Hey guys, how's it going? Arya here. Um, first of all, I want to say that I'm really sorry I have not been doing any reviews in a while. I've just been really uber busy with school stuff and everything, so I apologize for that. And I have been getting some comments that you guys have been uh, leaving for me and stuff like that, so I want to say thank you for all that <clears throat> and the feedback to some of my earlier videos, and I want to thank you for that, so... There we go. So, um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about some of the movies that I've seen since <clears throat> my last video and let you guys know what I thought about them and et cetera, et cetera. So let's get started with, <clears throat> sorry. So let's get started with The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. Now this movie, of course, is the first movie in the Hobbit trilogy that's the big prequel to Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. And... I really think that this movie was really good. I mean, it wasn't like great or anything, but I thought it was really, really good. Um, the casting choices were good. Um, Martin Freeman as um, as the young Bilbo Baggins, I thought was good. And bringing back Sir Ian McKellen as Gandalf, I thought was just really a good idea. Because if they got any other actor to play this character, I would have been really upset. Like, no, it's not the Gandalf I remember from Lord of the Rings, and etc., etc., you know, um, you know, I mean, since this is the prequel to Lord of the Rings, you have to have some of the actors back and stuff like that, so there you go. Um, I thought that bringing back, um, Ian Holm and Elisha Wood for the beginning of the movie before we get into, before we see young Bilbo and stuff like that, I thought that was a really genius idea. Um, you know, and the, the dwarves and stuff like that, that, you know, they, they convince Bilbo to go on this great adventure and stuff like that. It really just got me hooked into the movie. I was like, okay, this is going to be good. This is going to be great. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. And it, this movie did not disappoint me at all. Um, so there you go. I thought it was a really good movie. Again, uh, I, I'm a huge Peter Jackson fan. I loved the Lord of the Rings movies that he did. I loved his remake of King Kong. I thought that was really brilliant. And, um, but yeah, I do think that, um, The Hobbit and Unexpected Dream was really good. I'm really looking forward to Desolation of Smog this year and, of course, next year. They're back again. I think that these next two movies are going to be really, really good. So, there you go. Uh, next one, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. Now, um, I do, now, I do know that there are some parallels between this and Van Helsing, you know, mainly with using, like, the weapons and stuff that, that definitely were not around at the time and stuff, but it was a very good movie. I really loved it. And, uh, you know, this movie starts off with, you know, the, the traditional Hansel and Gretel story, you know, about you know, Hansel Girl going into the witch's house and stuff like that, and the witch gets defeated in the end and stuff like that. It's, and you know, that's the beginning of the movie, but the rest of the movie goes into what happened afterwards, which I think was a very smart move because, you know, it would have been just a downer if this movie was just, you know, oh, this movie's gonna be about the story of Hansel Girl that we all knew from a kid, knew from when we were kids and stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. No. This movie shows us what happens after that. And that's what I really loved about this movie. And what did Hansel Gretel do in the end? They became witch hunters and stuff like that. And, and, and it made sense. Because, you know, obviously they didn't want um, all these children to go through what they went through when they were kids. So that's why they decided to become witch hunters and stuff like that. And it was a really good story and I loved that. And this movie had a very good story to it, believe me. Um, it was one of the things that just made me enjoy this movie 100%. So, there you go. Um, but yeah, I really loved it. It was great. Um, I think for me... Hold on. Yeah? I was talking to you. I thought you were talking to Mag. Did you order a pizza? Yeah. Okay. Hey, get out of here. Ouch. All right. Yeah, the pizza's in the fridge. Okay. Yeah, just don't eat it all. No, I'm not eating it. Okay. I'm gonna eat out there, so. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that little interruption. Um, 
But what was I gonna say? Oh yes, um, and of course for. Huh? I just took him out. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, um, again, for me, the standout for this movie was definitely um, Famke Jensen as um, as the main villain, which character in the movie. I mean, I, I was blown away by her performance in this movie, just like I was blown away with Anne Hathaway's performance in Les Mis. Um, but yeah, um, again, really good movie. I loved it. It just blew me out. It just, oh, it was incredible. Um, next on the list, what was it? Oh, that's right. Jack the Giant Slayer. Now, this movie was directed by Brian Singer, who obviously gave us the first two X-Men movies and Superman Returns. Uh, he's going to be directing the upcoming sequel to X-Men First Class, which I think is Oh, I just can't wait for that. Um, but yeah, Jack the Giant Slayer. It was a really good movie and stuff like that. Again, kind of on the same level as Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, but not exactly. Um, obviously, this movie, it it basically does tell the story of Jack and the Beanstalk and stuff like that. But with a twist, there's more to the story that we probably never realized when, from when we were kids. So, um, but yeah, it was very good. Um, I saw this movie in 3D. Definitely see it in 3D if you can. I know it's been a while since the movie's been in theaters. It's probably not in theaters anymore, but if it's still out there somewhere, definitely see it in 3D because the 3D was really, really good. It was like in your face 3D and stuff like that. It was very subtle. And I like 3D movies where the 3D is very subtle. And they only use it if necessary. You know, they use this stuff if it's necessary. And that, to me, is what made this movie really good. Because it knew when to use the 3D effects well. And that's why I like this movie. Um, you know, again, uh, the acting was good. The story was really good. Uh, the little plot twists here and there were good, too. Um... I love this movie, so definitely go check it out if it's still out there somewhere, so yeah. And last but definitely not least, this is the movie I've seen the most recently, is Oz the Great and Powerful. Now for me, this movie, it, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, you know, this is one of those Sam Raimi movies and stuff like that. I loved his, I loved his Spider-Man movies, even though I, yeah, Spider-Man 3 was just kind of eh. Uh, the first two Spider-Man movies are great. Spider-Man 3 was just kind of eh. Um, but yeah, I do think that this movie is definitely one of his best movies so far. I don't know how many other movies he's directed. I know he did the Evil Dead movies and all those other big movies and stuff like that that he's directed and stuff. So, um, but yeah, this also great and powerful was really really good I really enjoyed it the story was good the acting mm, it wasn't that bad you know I, I I thought James Franco did a good job Mila Kunis was she was okay she wasn't bad she wasn't great she was just okay um, Rachel Wise was good um, Michelle Williams was excellent and um, the two other characters, um, the the monkey voiced by Zach Braff and the little China girl voiced by Joey King, they were good. They were really great characters. And uh, the little China girl for me was especially one of the standout characters of that movie. I mean, she had attitude and stuff like that. She she starts with a sweet girl and then, you know, she wants to go off with, um, with Oz and the monkey to find... Uh, the, the Wicked Witch stuff like that. She wants to go so badly and I was like, no, no, we're we're not going to take you with you because we're not going to take you with us because you know, your man trying to break easily and stuff like that. She's like, no, I really want to go. I really want to go. Take me with you. Take me with you. And they're like, okay, you can come on with us. Let's go. And stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, she had attitude and that was, that was just really great. Um, I definitely think they are going to make a sequel to this one. And if so, it's probably going to show a lot more as to what happened before the events of The Wizard of Oz. So that's what I'm really hoping 
for the inevitable sequel if they are gonna make a sequel so um so yeah there you go um but yeah those are the movies I've seen most recently so those are my thoughts on them and um I also am gonna do something new this year for my October leading up to Halloween reviews I did them last year with the Banana Realm Street movies and some other movies and stuff like that um but this year I will let you you guys pick what movies I'm gonna review now there are some requirements first of all they need to be straight up horror movies okay um that means I do have some amount of gore in them um you know just some kind of scares movies that make, that make me jump out of my seat and stuff like that so there you go second requirement um they need to be just DVDs, no Blu-rays. I'm sorry, I just got a new DVD player recently. Won't play Blu-rays, but that's but that's no big deal. Um, I might get a Blu-ray player eventually, maybe somewhere in the near future. I just don't know when. But as of right now, just purely DVDs only. Um, so there you go. And number three. They need to be movies or movie franchises that I'm aware of. You know, things like uh, Friday the 13th or Halloween or Child's Play or something like that. Um, so here we go. So there you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, also, no remakes, please. I cannot stand remakes for the life of me. I know some of them are good, but uh, please don't make me review the remakes. I really just want to stick to the originals. I'll review the remakes eventually. I just want to see the originals first. So that way I know what to judge when I look at the remakes. So there you go. Also, I know there will be some issues with getting all of the movies on on DVD and stuff like that. It's, it's really going to be an issue mainly for the Halloween movies because all of the movies were released by different... Uh, studios over the years and stuff like that so it's gonna be really really hard for me to get all the Halloween movies because there's no definitive box set so there you go I mean it'll be easier with like the Friday the 13th movies because you know all of them were released by Paramount and stuff like that um but yeah again it's gonna be harder with the Halloween movies but if you guys want me to review those movies, I'll review them, no doubt. It's probably, it's just gonna take me a little bit longer to find all of the movies. So there you go. I'm not saying Halloween is off the table because it's not. If you guys want me to review those movies, that's fine. It's just it's gonna be hard for me to track them all down. Plus, I need to watch them and take notes and you know talk and figure out the points I'm gonna talk about for the movies and stuff like that so uh, there you go so that's basically it and if you guys want me, want me to review like standalone movies like the classic universal movies you know, like Frankenstein, Dracula, The Mummy or whatever that's perfectly fine I have no objections to those movies I loved Dracula and I love Frankenstein so if you guys want me to review those movies that's perfectly fine you know, um, and again, uh, you know, with The Mummy, there's the original, and then there are uh, the remakes, you know, those movies of Brendan Fraser and stuff like that. I have no objections to those movies either. So if you guys want to review The Mummy, as well as the Brendan Fraser Mummy movies, you know, that he were, that he, the mo those movies that he, he was in and stuff like that, that's perfectly fine. You know, I have no objection to that. But again, it has to be pure, straight up horror. It cannot be a mixture of like horror and sci-fi or horror and comedy, you know, um, which might be somewhat of an issue because, um, you know, with the remake of Evil Dead that came out, I'm actually, I'm actually wanting to see the original Evil Dead movies. If so, if you guys want me to review those movies, that's fine too, you know, it could be anything, but the main genre has to to be horror. That's the main point. The main genre of these of the movies has to be horror. That's 
the main ground rule, okay? So there you go. Um, I'm Matt. Feel free to um, to write your requ your requests in, and I'll try to get to. I'll try to see what I can do. So that's it for now. So until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. I don't know when my next review is gonna be. So until then, I'll talk to you guys later. So live long and prosper. Peace out. Bye.